Joining us on the line now is Dr. Jamie Two-Wheel. He is an internal medicine specialist right here in our own backyard. Um, how's it going, Doc? How are you doing today? Going well. How are you? I'm doing good, but we just had a little dilemma, and our viewers could see it if they were watching during that break. I'll show them right now. So I was trying to have Tyler help me with my laptop and type up some information for the segment. Okay. I went to hand on the laptop to do it right now, but I, I can't. It's like he, I'm getting in a six-foot space. Plus, I don't know how to clean it up and wipe it down and just, uh, it's a complicated world we are in right now, Doc. Oh, man, it's it's not good. <laughs> so thanks for joining us. I just want to ask you a couple of questions uh, based on the news that we have. We heard the president yesterday say that uh, we're working on, we've got this three-phase plan to uh, get back to our new normal, one step at a time, and it's all going to be driven by uh, the, the 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 medicine and and keeping people healthy. Uh, I think that's going to you know continue on through the state and our local communities. I don't know if you heard that yesterday, but do you have any thoughts about about that? Is because to me it was reassuring to hear that as much as I want to get back to normal, uh, we're going to be doing this in a way that is. Uh, under the advice of the medical and, and, and scientists and, and those experts. Oh, I think that's incredible. I, I would hope that it's purely driven by that because we're the ones that are trying to, the scientists are the ones that are trying to basically, you know, keep everybody as healthy as possible. So I, I think that if they're going to take that advice, that's fantastic. What I, I would be concerned about is, is looking at it from a purely economic standpoint. And again, while I do agree that economics should play a bit of a role in there, but we, we need to consider lives first. And so I'm, I'm relieved that he's he's deferring a lot of that more towards the to the uh, medical community. And let's just hope that that continues. Well, and, and let's hope that we could we have the, the courage to do that all the way all the way through that we can find the answers. Uh, are you hearing or seeing anything in your practice, any indication right at the grassroots level in a doctor's office right here in our backyard? Forget all the numbers for a minute. Any indication things are getting any better? I think so. Um, I get I've had a couple of patients. I've had a few actually that have tested positive, but have had relatively mild courses and have been able to socially isolate and not have to go to the emergency room. And I've had all the way up to patients that had required to be on ventilators. So it's, it's you know, I'm following a lot of it, but it looks like it's been a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm seeing some promising things. I haven't had, you know, thank God, knock on wood, but um, I'm also hearing a lot of other things. So I think my, my experience might be a little bit different than others. Dr. So, Tuwio, we heard uh, yesterday that uh, we've got more testing centers around Metro Detroit. Uh, testing will be a big key of coming out uh, of this crisis. Everyone says that we got to test. We got to test heavily. Now, there's other metrics that they talked about yesterday. Uh, just watching other infectious diseases is a leading indicator of uh, the coronavirus and other things but but we got to test we got to figure out what these metrics are to, to be able to come out of this um do you have any thoughts on any of that absolutely the, the thing is is that if we're going to go based on you know determining whether or not we're going to reopen the economy so to speak based on the you know information that the medical community is providing we're going to need as much information as possible so the amount of testing that we can get the more that we can start to get ideas of where these things are we can also get a better idea of the epidemiology of this this particular virus how it's getting spread different ways in that it's getting spread we can start to look for hot spots this can really guide whether or not we're able to open things up sooner or later i think if we're doing that with limited amounts of information based on what you know let's say we don't have enough testing then how are we going to know whether or not we're doing well to the point where we can open things up. So testing definitely is, is a huge role in all of this. You know, and one of the things I was trying to sort out today, um, and I was unable to really get it from the information I found online, is we see the number of cases continue to rise here in Michigan, but we don't mm -hmm. see the number of tests. They don't seem to publish if we're actually testing more people. We just opened up a new testing center in Oakland County. The, the, theoretically, there, there's more testing. Don't you really need to look at the number of people that are getting tested to look at the results of those tests, good and bad, and, and look at the people that are, you know, that are passing away, unfortunately, the people that are coming out of the hospital. You know, you just look at one metric, and it can be, you know, used for some political agenda. And that's what I'm concerned about a little bit. Yeah, I, I do. I see where you're coming from with that. 
you know, you also have to t bear in mind that the testing in and of itself is based on particular criteria that you have to meet. So they're not testing just anybody that wants one. We're, they're testing people that have distinct symptoms. So that also can skew some of the numbers if you're looking at the population as a whole, because now you have asymptomatic people that are not getting tested. And that can also impact your numbers as well. You have to, you have to look at it from all of those points of view. And, and, and it becomes, you also have to know people, you're right, you have to know people that have gotten tested, whether or not they're, they're coming out of the hospital so that we can have a little bit more accurate data in terms of, of recovery. We can have more accurate data in terms of death. It's difficult to be able to get these numbers out there when we don't have enough people getting tested. So I think testing needs to certainly get pushed. Yeah, we're seeing some information, some talk yesterday, that this Abbott Labs test and some of the other tests may be uh, we may be able to implement them at the office. I mean, is that even conceivable that, that uh, you know, the head of the HR department could have some testing unit, or is that just a crazy notion that uh, it needs to be in the hands of a professional, uh, a health professional? Uh, it depends on the type of test. I mean, if it's a blood draw, then I think it would probably be at least in an HR type scenario where there's a nurse able to draw blood. Or I think in any situation, you could have a nurse doing these tests if they're going to be very simple tests indeed. You're talking, I assume, when you say the office, you're talking not medical offices, but in the work. No, office, like right? no. I mean, I, I heard some reports yesterday. Well, you might be able to go into the office and get a test once a week. At your, if you work for a big company, they might have a nurse right there and just get a test right at work. Is, is that conceivable? As we like branch out testing in a big way, or is that just you're you're the doc? I don't know. Is that is that impossible? It's not impossible. You can always do things like that. But the question is, is the benefit of that? If you're going to have a guy who's going to go all the way to work, walk in the office, walk through the office and potentially expose everyone in the office just so he can get a test to find out that he's positive three days later, that might be a bit of an issue. You know, you might be able that might cause more problems along the line. But if you are able to get everybody tested in a way where it's going to be safe, I mean, for most medical offices, if there's a suspicion that you might have it, they're going to test you in the, you know, initially we were recommending to get testing in the parking lot. We don't want them to come in and expose other people. So bear in mind that exposing other people while you're trying to get your testing is going to be a big issue. All right. Well, we're going to have to zip along. Thank you for your time. Two final, really, really quick questions. A, uh, there's a little dis uh, dispute yesterday between uh, Dr. Gupta and Dr. Oz. Which, which should I go with? Is it Dr. Oz or Dr. Gupta? I'm going to stick with the home, the home team. You know, he's a graduate <laughs> from Michigan and he's from Nova. I, I like Dr. Sanjay Gupta. All right. Like we go with Gupta. And then finally, uh, a therapeutic was just getting everybody very excited today. Wall Street opened up big because of it. And they're out testing in Chicago with 125 people getting really good results. Should we get excited about that? Or would the medical community say that's only 125 people? We need a little bit more information. Uh, well, they're, if I'm not mistaken, they're in from the best of my knowledge, they're at phase three trials, essentially. They're pushing this along quite rapidly. Um, I think we should always remember that that drug studies, trials are what determines the efficacy of the drug, not anybody else, not the markets, not politicians. I think when they get the data that suggests, that supports the use of the drug, then I definitely think we should be excited about it. Right. From what I'm reading, it looks promising and, and it is an antiviral. So hopefully it can, you know, again, always any little sliver of benefit is going to be what you want. So if it, if it has, from what I'm looking at, it looks very promising. I'm hoping that it will continue to be such, but I would say just hold hope until the trials are completed because you never want to rush to judgment on anything. It could end up having potentially bad side effects or you're going to be a worse yet have potentially reckless behavior. People thinking, Oh, there's a treatment out there. Now I'm going to go out there and get exposed. We just, are not, we are not there yet by any question. <laughs> Dr. Two Wheel, thank you very much for joining us. Dr. Jamie Two Wheel, internal medicine specialist uh, from right here at home, and we appreciate you joining us again today in the Megacast. With short notice, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Anytime.